Welcome to Bible 180, Joshua. Joshua is about commitment. Was God's miracles and protection only possible because of Moses? The book starts probing to find out the answer to this question. Right away, Yahweh promises Joshua his presence and tells him to be strong and courageous. Joshua sends spies into the land who find refuge from Rahab the prostitute. Rahab does not turn against Yahweh, but turns toward him and is shown mercy. The people follow the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When God's throne, the Ark of the Covenant, reaches the Jordan River, the waters move out of the way just as they had for Moses. Following God's instructions, march and yell, the walls of Jericho fall down. When Israel consults Yahweh and follows his guidance, all they do is win, 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 no matter what. However, when Achan steals from items devoted to the Lord, he pays for it with his life. Nor does the Lord go with Israel when they fight without God's command. When the Lord commands, To, to fight, the Lord makes the day twice as long so they can beat off an army of five enemies. Israel must kill certain inhabitants of the land. It helps us to understand this if we take Yahweh at his word. We're told these people were committed to the wrong things like worshiping false idols and offering child sacrifices. They had taken Jacob's land when he left for Egypt and would not return it to his descendants. They had shown neither hospitality nor respect when Israel was wandering but had attacked and persecuted Israel. They wouldn't get out of the way, so God made them. An exception, the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites pretend they are from far off and want a peace treaty with Israel. They deceive the Israelite elders who accept a treaty without first consulting Yahweh. When discovered, the treaty is honored, but they accept becoming wood gatherers and water carers in exchange for protection. The Gibeonites recognized Yahweh's power. They humble themselves and therefore are saved. Joshua faithfully follows through on several of Moses' promises, including assigning each tribe land, granting Zelophed's daughters a place of inheritance and giving Caleb first dibs because of his faithfulness. The Levites are given town and two and a half tribes fulfilled their promise to fight for Israel and Joshua allows them to return to the land promised to them. Even though Moses is dead, the promises and power of Yahweh are still with Israel. The book ends with Joshua's final speech, similar to Moses' farewell speech. Don't worship false idols. Don't intermarry those who worship false gods. Remember the victories God has given you and fear, love, and respect Yahweh above all things. The Israelites renew their commitment to Yahweh formally. When the Israelites were committed to Yahweh, rivers moved out of their way, walls fell down when they screamed, and the sun stood still when they prayed. On the other hand, those who were committed to evil were eventually overcome. Yet we see a hint of how God is merciful and wants to save when he allows conniving tricksters like the Gibeonites and prostitutes like Rahab to be part of his people. The lesson both Yeshua's want to teach us is that more important than what you've done is listening and trusting in the Lord.